Hello everyone, this is Mao Dan with CGTN. I'm now at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center. I will take you on a live tour at the InnoTech Expo 2017 here in Hong Kong. Uh, you can see around me there are many people visiting this uh, expo and there are many models here. Uh, for example, I can see a model of China's uh, Long March 7 rocket and also some other latest uh, space crafts here. Hong Kong people are coming to this tour for the third day now. Uh, the expo will last until October the 2nd. People can register online and get free tickets. If you want to see China's latest uh, technology achievements, just go to the website, register and get a free ticket to come here. And um, beside the uh, spacecraft, there is also a model that attracted many interests. That is nicknamed the Heavenly Eye. Actually, the full name of the equipment is the 500 meter aperture spherical radio telescope. It's a single dish telescope used to receive and detect signal in the universe it can receive radio signal of about 10 billion light years away from the earth so probably it can get some sign from aliens but we will see it's already in use now after more than 20 years of uh, development and also of construction and of course, there are more of China's latest space development and latest space equipment. For example, here, uh, this one uh, is uh, what I am very interested in. It's kind of satellite. You can see from this very little model that it's a well, small, cute satellite, but I guess it's a smaller model of it. I want to invite a researcher here to introduce it to me. Hello, Hello. Hello. Uh, can yeah. you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, my name is uh, Yiming Hu from mm -hmm. Papa Mountain Observatory in Nanjing. Yeah, yeah you are uh, in charge of this uh, uh, exhibit, right? Uh, yeah. So can you tell us more about the satellite? Okay. It's for like sure. dark matter particles? Okay. Our satellite is called Dumpy, you can see here. Dumpy, D-A-M-P-E. Yeah. It means dark matter particle explorer. Mm -hmm. So. And this is the first satellite, uh, scientific uh, satellite uh -huh. in China uh -huh. sent into space. Yeah. This program is import, supported by Chinese Academy of Sciences and uh, generally designed by Purple Mountain Observatory. Of course, a lot of, a lot of institutes are enjoying the, join this program. Mm -hmm. The PI of this, uh, of this program is Professor Jing Chang who is very famous in China, you know, and... Uh, so what can do the satellite? Okay, the satellite was sent into the uh, space on December 17th, 2015. And it can, it can detect a lot of types of particles. Mm -hmm. For example... In the universe, right? In the universe, yeah, yeah. in space. Uh, for example, in electrons, mm -hmm. protons, and the photons, of course. Mm -hmm. So, and in a, ve in a very range, wide range, energy range, and mm -hmm. with a very high energy resolution, and of course, a very good background rejection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, we uh, can see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we can open it. Okay, this is the solar panel. Everyone so panel oh, we open it. Uh -huh. So it consists of four sub detectors inside. Mm -hmm. We can from top to the bottom. We can we can see the first one is the uh, plastic scintillator detector, mm -hmm. and the second one is is the silicon tungsten tracker, mm -hmm. and the large one, the second, the third one is mm -hmm. the BGO crystal calorimeter. And the, the base one, the first one, is the neutron detector. With the help of the four detectors working together, we can get a lot of information of the instant particles into our detector. For example, the, t uh, the type of the particles, mm -hmm. the energy of, of the particles, and of course, the direction of the particles. Mm -hmm. with, those, with those important information of the common particles in space, our scientists want to or try to find out the evidence of the dark matter particles. Okay. Mm, so how much data do we have now from uh, yeah, this? Yeah, 
From now, we, we already have got about 3.1 billion particle events. With, with so much scientific data, our scientists are working hard on data analysis mm -hmm. and we'll give their uh, result step by step. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in October this year, we will publish the, the first result paper. Maybe it can address us something new about the universe. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, next month and okay. we are looking forward to okay, it. Okay, thank you. And now here we can see a bigger model of the satellite right behind it. Um, well, I can recognize that's the solar panel and that's the main part. It's made up of four detectors. And here we have another researcher. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, of course. My name is Deng Yichen from Purple Mountain Observatory located in Nanjing. Yeah, you have this uh, bigger model of yeah. the satellite, and I have got some information about satellite, but I know that it has a special Chinese name. Can you uh, uh, tell us the name and explain why it's called so? Uh, sure. Uh, this is the model of our satellite. The size is one half of in, in one one half in uh, in the both three directions, and uh, as you know, the blue part are the solar. Solar, solar panel, panel yeah, yeah, used to supply the power for the whole satellite, and mm -hmm. inside are the four, four de detectors, sub detectors located, uh, and uh, uh, Dampi is the English name of our satellite. It has the Chinese name Wu Kong, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Wukong, Wukong is a monkey king, very famous right? monkey king in history, yeah. but here it has a lot of meaning. In Chinese, Wu means understand and uh, discover. Kong, on the other hand, stands for the unknown in the universe. So, Wu Kong together means understand the unknown and, uh, of course, uh, search the dark matter in the space. So, oh, welcome you yeah. all, all the citizens here to Purple Mountain Observatory in Nanjing to learn more about our Dampi, our Wu Kong. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is called Wu Kong, same name of China's Monkey King, but of course uh, it means to understand the universe, explore more about the space. Uh, that's the development, the goal of the development of China's uh, space exploration. And of course uh, this year's InnoTech Ex Expo, its theme is to understand China's uh, civilization of technology and also its latest innovation. So now we also see some very ancient in inventions, including this one. It looks like a watchtower, but it is not. It's, uh, well, it's an observatory. It's a water transport observ observatory. So on the first floor, you can see some wheels that is uh, using water to measure time. And then second floor, there is a globe to show the astronomical phenomena that is observed from the equipment at the very top. That is for astronomical observation. And there are many interesting details here. Ancient people used this tower, this observatory, to show the time and also the astronomical phenomena they observed through this very latest innovation at that time. And it's also all those equipment represent China's science development in its whole history. I remember in East Beijing there is a similar ancient observatory like this and we can see at the expo there are many students middle school students and primary students uh, come to visit all this equipment and this uh, demos uh, 
it is Tuesday morning here in Hong Kong, so um, all the schools take it as a rare and special opportunity uh, to bring the students here to know about uh, the country's scientific development and also the, the nine day expo is a good uh, opportunity for people to conduct science education. And here another very popular module that is China's C919 passenger jet. It's China's first homemade large passenger jet. And actually, it has got more than 700 pre-orders already. So we are going to see this kind of plane in air. Maybe some of you will take such plane in the future. And here right beside is another module. It's an advanced version of the C919. It's called C929 and it's uh, in design and it's uh, yet to be produced. It's a wide body twin jet airliner and will be produced uh, jointly by China and Russia. There are many people here and I'm trying to get you some of the most interesting items at this expo. This one is called internet car. Actually I cannot tell why it's related to internet, but I can see a man inside the car. Let's try. Uh, hello, can you introduce this car to us briefly? Okay, I get the helper. What's your name, please? Uh, CG, we are doing CGTN Facebook Live. Facebook Live? Yes, yes. It's alive? Yeah, it's live now. Okay. So I'm interested in this internet car. Why yes. does it call internet car? Uh, this is a plug-in hybrid car mm -hmm. and developed by Sakamoto, mm -hmm. Shanghai Industrial Automotive Corporation. Mm -hmm. And it's also a joint a joint uh, production via Saic and uh, Alibaba. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an uh, internet device is uh, developed by Alibaba. Mm -hmm. And uh, we call it an internet car because uh, uh, on that we can see a screen on, on, on the car. Screen. Screen can can the you car. show it to us? But the internet device, yeah. uh, its internet is uh, based on the internet of uh, main mainland, not in Hong Kong, so I cannot show the, oh, the function see, uh, here. Yeah, the, the internet disconnection. It, does, it does, yeah. does, ha does okay, not have you, a signal yeah, here. Yeah, introduce us. It's internet car, which means that you have internet in it? Yes, or uh, this car is just like a cell phone. We can uh, contact this car uh, via a APP. We call it uh, We can uh -huh. apply the APP on our cell phone. So you mean I can use the app to control my car even yes. though I'm not beside it? Yes, uh, this is the APP, but mm -hmm. I have not, not access to, to mm -hmm. this car because so what can uh, I only, do only the that? owner only the uh. owner has the access oh, to, to yeah, the car. That, that's for safety. Yeah. Well, if if I'm the owner of the car, I can mm -hmm. do uh, such things uh, just like uh, uh, just imagine in the in the winter it's very cold, yes. and if I want to go downstairs and uh, start my car, I can uh, start the car when I am home and mm. I can order it to warm up. Oh, I see that. Uh, yeah. Just like in summer, I can uh, order it to, to cool down. And I, I, if I go down to the car, it's already cool. And that's oh. first, uh, first, uh, first function. And after that, uh, 
after I uh, step in the car, I can tell tell it uh, where I'm going to. Today just talk I'm. Talk to the car. Uh, just talk to the car. Oh. I'm going to 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 my to my office. Or I'm going to have some inter uh, entertainment or just like some something that. Will search the destination uh, for you. That will search the destination and uh, uh, do the navigation for me. Oh. And afterwards, if I, when I'm driving, I want to uh, have some entertainment on the car, and I can uh, tell him uh, uh, I want to uh, uh, hear some sing. Uh, oh uh, yeah, this, I want uh, to listen to your song. Uh, listen to your song from the so, uh, from from oh. an extra singer. Uh, if I want to uh, from from Jay Cho or from uh, uh, so it's okay, like some it it, it yeah. will download. Uh, it's an internet car, so it can download the download the song and play oh. it. Okay. And also, uh, when uh, this is a plug-in hybrid, so I can charge this car. Uh, when 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 we charge the car, uh, and uh, if I'm outside, if I'm home or, or, or outside, I can see the status of the car via the internet device. I can oh. see oh, uh, when uh, the charging is uh, completed, it can tell me that the charge is completed, so I can uh, go down and just drive drive, drive away. Oh, okay, that's and very useful. Uh, yes, and uh, we yeah. can also we also have some other functions. If I wanna uh, control the window, uh, the sunroof, and uh, some other parts of the car, I, I can just talk to the car. Not uh, because when I'm driving, it's very dangerous to oh, to yes. control something. Yeah. I can I can just yeah. talk to the car yeah, via uh, uh, via uh, via the Mandarin or some. Uh, this car we can talk uh, uh, maybe Mandarin or English. Okay. Uh, from this car and it's, yeah. It's, Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so as I understand, it's a smart car. You can talk to it, tell it what to do, and then you can control it from distance. Uh, now we are coming to something very interesting. I guess it's about medical. Hi, uh, can you help me understand what's on exhibit here? Yeah. Uh, first, can you introduce yourself to us? Oh, my name is Wang Sen. I'm a doctor candidate uh, from Tsinghua University, Beijing, China. Mm, and so uh, this device is called uh, Deep Brain Stimulation System, DBS. Mm -hmm. It is used uh, to deal with uh, Parkinson's disease. Uh, the system contains three parts. The main part is the stimulator. Yeah. It can produce uh, uh, special currents and uh, implanted to human body. In implanted human body? Yeah. Uh, where? Where? Uh, uh, near the chest. Uh, uh, so under I under the skin. Into my body. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then what the, else do I need? The, se the uh. second part is electrode. Mm -hmm. It is implanted to subthalamic part of a human brain. Mm -hmm. And the uh, uh, third part is used to connect the electrode and the stimulator. Mm -hmm. And uh, by stimulating human brain, we can uh, alleviate uh, alleviate uh, symptom uh, symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Oh, so it's for Parkinson Parkinson's yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to know, like, uh, how long can mm. can I have it? Like for whole life, or I have to take yeah. it out? Yeah. Uh, for uh. uh for a lifetime, mm, rest a lifetime, uh, the patients should uh, implant uh, the device. Uh -huh. And uh, this this device is rechargeable. We can use the recharger oh, to recharge the device, uh, the stimulator wirelessly. It can be used uh, at least uh, ten years. Okay. So how often should I recharge it? Uh, uh, about uh, one month. One month. Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay, so is it in use now? It is in clinical yeah. use. Yeah, yeah. There are about uh, uh, there are more than 150 hospitals in China can do this kind of surgery, and uh, oh. thousands of people benefit from this. Wow, that's great. Uh, uh, may I know how much do I need to have such a surgery? Uh, it the price ranges uh, the price, the total price uh, for DBS and uh, surgery mm. ranges from. 70,000 yuan to 300,000 yuan. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. I think it's very important and useful for like people with Parkinson's. What else disease? Uh, what else of, yeah. Parkinson's, uh, mainly Parkinson's disease. Mainly Parkinson's, and yeah. uh, we also hope that the device can be introduced to Hong Kong 
as soon as possible and uh, to help to contribute to uh, better Hong Kong, a healthier Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you're Michael. welcome. Yeah, so that's, well, that's a high-end medical disease. It's for Parkinson's uh, disease, and but it, you have to plan it into your body. Uh, actually, this part is the information part. Um, the expo, uh, for, for your audience who just come in, I'm at the InnoTech Expo 2017 in Hong Kong and I visited some very interesting and uh, high tech and I'm now at the information part. There are uh, all together three parts and now it's the information uh, and uh, communications part and here I find another interesting one that's the Navicam. Navicam uh, from the Chinese it means a capsule that you can put into your body and there is a camera in it. Uh, hello, can you show us the, the cam? Yeah. Okay. Here. So this is the Navi cam. It's a capsule for me. And the size, the same as a capsule, but but I can tell there's something in it, and I'm hesitant to take it in. Um, can you show us how it works? Okay. Well, I think it's magnetic. According to the information I read, uh, you can take the capsule just as you take other, other tablets and then there will be a small camera inside you to help you do the stomach check. There is no pen. There is no pain in doing the stomach check, but there is one concern. You have to wait, I guess, two days for the capsule to travel through your intestines until you can clear it out from your body. So that's the reason why I'm so hesitant to take it. But it's, uh, it's interesting and I believe it's very useful and I know that it's uh, in clinical application in China. Again, I'm at the InnoTech Expo 2017 in Hong Kong. It's a nine-day expo, will last until October the 2nd. If you want to come and visit, you can just go to the website and register and then you will get a free ticket and enjoy the expo and different technology and innovation here. I'm coming to another zone, it's called...
we are seeing uh, some people are visiting the area that's called China's navigation. You can see um, a fl uh, the models of uh, China's fleet and also China's uh, uh, aircraft carrier, the Liaoning. But uh, there are so many people there, so we will visit there later. Uh, but uh, we can see um, to attract uh, children and young people, there are many uh, interactive uh, zones here. I can see uh, people are playing with the models to get an idea of the scientific principles here. That's uh, a main goal of the Inno Tech Expo this year is for the public science education. And also, uh, there are a lot of uh, the popular VR and AR experiences open to visitors. You can come here and get a VR glass, and then you can see the uh, process of a rocket launch, or you can experience a walk on Mars, or just uh, sit inside a fighter jet and experience what it's like for a soldier to, drive, to fly the jet. And here I'm coming to another small zone that is called the Light of Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong is encouraging innovation and technology, so uh, it provided this platform, this chance for uh, the uh, young talents to show their innovation. Um, there are uh, many small items here, showcases people's creativity. For example, this one, uh, it's a robot that can recognize people and avoid collision. It's invented by some university students in Hong Kong. And also here I can see a, a two robotic hands. They are also invented by uh, some college students who used to, uh, who want to use these hands to stimulate real human body. and then maybe put it in use for those disabled people. And we have more of uh, inventions here. It's a project that is using this little fish to test the composition of some kind of water. We cannot do demonstration now, but uh, it's uh, like when there is something harmful in the water, the fish will change into another color. And also we have a special camera here. Hello, can you show me the camera? How does it work? Can you show me the camera? How, how, how does it work? I'm sorry. I cannot sorry. show it now? No, no, there's no battery. Oh, no battery. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, the battery is running out, so we cannot show it. 
Um, this is the part where we can see some of the inventions of Hong Kong people. And as the expo is now in its second year in Hong Kong, the goal is clear is to encourage uh, young Hong Kong people to know about the country's uh, scientific development. And also encourage them to put their ideas into action, into their creation. Here we can see it's a robot for uh, preventing fire in the forest. It's already in use. And there is a touching story behind it. Uh, the inventor of this robot, he saw a tragic some 20 years ago where a teacher and her students died in a forest of fire. And then he invented this to detect and prevent any fire that can happen. And here we see two other gloves. It's called the Sign Language Translator. It's invented by Hong Kong middle school students. And from what's shown here, we can see that uh, the students is saying that they want to help those people who cannot speak, those disabled people, to interact with more people. Using these gloves, they can translate sign language into words that can be shown on cell phones. I am now live at the InnoTech Expo 2017. We are showing you uh, some of the interesting projects here. The expo will last until October the 22nd. If you want to understand more of the projects, if you want to know more about the designs, the innovation, you can register online and come to see the models, to ask questions to the researchers and get an idea of how the country is developing its technology. Uh, we are coming across something very popular here and it's called the offspring of the silk worm from China's Tiangong 2 space lab. Let's come and check. There was some silkworm taken to the space lab with the Shenzhou 11. And we are told these are the offspring of them. They are so small. There are many more experiments. Uh, uh, there are many more science experiments conducted at the Chinese Space Lab, and uh, Hong Kong students are very interested in the results of these experiments. So they come here and ask a lot of questions. 
some of them can be answered by the researchers, but some of them maybe will be submitted to the lab and then answered by the scientists there. Now we are almost finished at the InnoTech Expo. Actually, there are more science performance and innovation demonstration and also seminar. For example, uh, this evening there will be seminar held by China's female astronaut Wang Yaping. If you are interested, you can register online and come to the InnoTech Expo 2017 here in the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center where you can enjoy China's civilization of technology. You can see some ancient inventions and also you can see some uh, very latest innovations. I'll leave you here and again it's the second year of the InnoTech Expo in Hong Kong. It will last until October the 20, uh, October the 2nd. So there are six days and you can register online to get free tickets to come and visit and to see China's latest innovations. See you next time.